Hello and welcome. This week on Eyewitness Report, we'll bring you updates on the fire that engulfed shops and shanties at Okobaba Waterfront Wood Market and what the Lagos State Government is doing to find a solution to a recurring disaster that has affected people's livelihood over the years. What does the traffic situation look like in Apapa and Agege areas of Lagos State as two major roads accommodating high vehicular movement are closed for upgrade? Also on the program, pictures from eyewitnesses tell sad stories of how fire and road accidents as well as banditry have left individuals and communities in pain in some northern states. Details of this and more shortly. Welcome to the program. I am Yomi Otaibi. Repair works are ongoing on the Apapa outbound section of the Marine Bridge in Lagos since it was closed on Monday, January 17th, just as the Lagos State Government has commenced the rehabilitation and upgrade of the Babajide Sanwolu Road in Agege. Following the closure of these roads, eyewitness reports visits the area to assess the scope of work being done and how they are affecting vehicular movement. A sunny afternoon on the Marine Bridge in Lagos and motorists are having a smooth drive in and out of Apapa. The traffic situation doesn't give any calls for concern despite the partial closure of the Apapa-bound segment of the bridge. Work has been going on since the section was closed for repairs. The scope of the work involves the replacement of the damaged bearings, worn out expansion joints and resurfacing. According to the Federal Controller of Works in Lagos, the rehabilitation is a continuation of the project that started in October 2019. This contract was awarded in September 2019 to Mesa Bidwell Nigeria Limited and they uh, moved to site in October the same year. That was 2019. Ever since the contractor has been working. Since he started the work, he has re replaced about 120 bearings at the back and he has also changed about 120 expansion uh, joints. So right now, this particular section where we are now is about 300 meters in length. It is going to replace 40 number bearings and the six number uh, expansion joints and then carry out the resurfacing. The work will last for about 10 weeks. Uh, middle of uh, April, the work will be completed and then the partial closure will now be open. Then we move to the other lane and then also carry out the partial closure and continue with the same type of work. So by June, July this year, the project will be completed 100% because as at today, we have achieved about 66% uh, completion of the project. Skin repairs are also part of the rehabilitation. At the time of recording, equipment were being deployed to commence work under the bridge. Skin repairs is also part of it. That is when you when you go under the bridge, you will see the pillars. That's the one we call the repair the that is standing. So you see that in some places the concrete has already paved. So we have to repair it, we have to put another fresh concrete. That's the one we call the skin repairs. So where it is badly damaged and you are seeing the exposure of the reinforcement, we do what we call jacketing. 
So you put more reinforcement and then you will now cast with a fresh concrete. But what you saw down that they are doing now is the skin repair. Uh, the project will have been completed, but because of a paucity of fund, the, 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 it's not properly, uh, regularly funded, and that's what caused the delay. Normally, Federal Ministry of Works, we have uh, more than 40 bridges in Lagos, and we carry out the routine inspection. Out of that, our routine inspection, it will now lead us to the routine maintenance. As I'm talking to you, uh, Third Mainland Bridge is ongoing. We are working on the underneath the bridge. Uh, last year, if you record, we changed some expansion joint and bearings on Third Mainland Bridge. Eco Bridge work is also going on. All these are part of uh, uh, the infrastructure uh, maintenance the federal government is carrying out. It's not only in Lagos State where the uh, work is going on. In other states too, uh, in, all other, in all other states in the federation, we are doing the same work because we have a team that go around to check the state of our bridges nationwide. And once they come back, they make their report, we prepare the proposal for the maintenance. And then uh, it goes to the Honorable Minister for further approval. Then it's awarded and then we carry it out. So that's what has led to this maintenance of a marine bridge that you are seeing now. There's been an easy flow of vehicular movement on alternative routes provided to ease traffic outbound Apapa. Lighter vehicles are allowed to descend towards Total Under Bridge and make use of fire service road to connect Marine Beach. The Federal Ministry of Works is also working with security and traffic agencies to ensure traffic flows easily along the axis. It appears official and not having a tough time controlling traffic since it's not a total closure. This has been the outlook for most part of the day until this gridlock caused by the breakdown of a heavy duty vehicle. Despite the unpredictable occurrence, the Lagos Sector Commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps says he does not envisage traffic congestion, though his men are adequately deployed. It's not as, um, as uh, let me say, difficult as we are imagining it, because it's not a major project. It's just about 300 stress of, no, 300 meter stress of road on Marine Bridge. And it's not a total closure, which has made the work to be easier. Because what we have on ground is about three lanes being narrowed down to one, while the necessary palliatives or this construction work is being done. And we still have the alternative routes for smaller cars who can decide to go down the bridge, while all the people that intend to outrightly avoid that place can make use of Apapa or Shudu or Shuki routes. Those are, that's actually the major alternative to that assignment. But with patience, that road is still very much available for Lagosians. We deployed uh, about 100 men to work with uh, LASMA along that MPA Apapa corridor. 
So what we just did was to do a kind of detachment. It's an extension now, a detachment of some of our men to that spot. You saw some of our men controlling traffic. That's just a detachment. And we also have three major routes, uh, commands along the Papa Oshodi, Oshokiro, that happen to be the alternative routes now that are managing that corridor. And what we operate is intelligent patrol system. When it is not necessary, when the traffic is flowing, you don't just keep men there. You only put them on intervention uh, projection. There was a breakdown, so there was need for quick intervention. I directed this morning that two tow trucks should be deployed along that corridor in case there's going to be a breakdown or obstruction. So all those things, all those predictions have been made. And it's also in conjunction with what we are having with uh, Lagos State uh, Traffic Management Team, that's LASMA. We've been working with them right from the beginning of uh, last year as regards maintaining traffic, uh, smooth movement of traffic along that corridor. I, I'm not envisaging any problem whatsoever. Another road earmarked for rehabilitation and upgrade is the Babajide Sawolu Road, formerly Dokwemu Road in Agege, an area notorious for high vehicular traffic. Both ends of the two-kilometer single-lane dual carriageway were closed on the night of Friday, January the 21st, and work has since begun with earth excavation for drainage construction. As a result of the closure, alternative routes to and from Iyano Ikbaja and Dokwemu are expected to get busier during the period. Extensions built beyond setbacks have been removed as more demolitions continue. Electrical poles are also being adjusted to accommodate the planned expansion and construction of new drainage. Upon completion, the road is expected to impact positively on the human and vehicular movement and the socio-economic activities of the area. However, some residents are gearing up to the challenges on their livelihood. So we're facing a lot of challenge from the road. These bad boys around used to torment us at night, especially at night. So but now government promised us to do it and it has started the work. So we're expecting a very good a very good living at this road and the area of Dokwemu. When I heard it that they are going to close the road, I, I was having the opinion that it was really going to affect my business because mostly trust comes in here to deliver my goods for me. So as soon as I heard it, I try, I've been trying to relocate, pending when the work is completed. Because they have pulled down the extension, it has reduced my space. I needed more space because of the nature of the business I do. So it has reduced the space. Before I heard that they were going to close the road, I was thinking of getting another shop closer to this place. The construction work will be executed in three phases. The first phase will focus on the old Ikmaja Road to Adialu Street Junction for three months. The entire project will last for 18 months. Recently, residents and shop owners at Okobaba Wood Market in a Bute Meta area of Lagos State lost their homes and businesses to fire. It's one disaster too many in recent years. Here's a report detailing how the state government's plan to relocate the market is unfolding. Before the fire of the 5th of January, this was what the Kano and Colt streets in Okoba Waterfront Wood Market, Ebutemeta, looked like. But what is now left afterwards are ashes, smoke, some remnant of what looks like the engine once used at sawmills, and some materials good enough for the scavenging business. There are many sides to the cause of the fire, which reportedly started at about 11 a.m. and engulfed over 500 shops and unspecified number of residential shanties. 
Although emergency management officers were on ground to contain the spread of the fire, but not until many residents had been rendered homeless. <laughs> Even their shrines were not spared. The people affected are many. We have as many as 300 to 500 shops and an uncountable number of residentials. There are various degrees of loss. I lost at least 3 million naira. I had four stores and I just got some money. For this man, his credentials are among the valuables lost to the fire. All the efforts we make to rescue our things are all in vain, are all in vain. We couldn't rescue even anything. So as we are now, we are left with our burnt pan, or burnt nails. Those are things we are packing. We don't have anything again. My own room, I don't know for others, in my own room I had my set of electronics. I have my certificates because I'm a graduate of Redeemers University. I have my certificates in there. I have my, my wife is pregnant and I have a lot of um, uh, babies or uh, things there. So and everything is gone now. The cost of house in this country, Nigeria, especially Lagos, is very high. We can't even afford to get a room. So that is why we just came here to manage ourselves. So if the government is going to help us, they should please help us with an housing solution. We have our works, but we need somewhere to at least after work to rest our head. So they should help us. If they are going to build this place for us and we'll be paying the government back instrumentally, we are, we, I personally myself, I can afford that. But for me to just pack 400000 to give to someone for a room in Lagos, I don't have that. So if, if the government will help us, they should help us with housing. Perhaps the greatest are the shelter for these people who say their most available alternative is sleeping under the open sky, at least for the night. Tisha Wambi. We have teachers, doctors here who live for their homes at month end. We are saddened by what has happened. They are still looking forward to help wherever it may come from, particularly in the interest of their children. The Okoba Wood Market and Sawmill is one of the biggest in Nigeria and accommodates over 2,000 sawmill traders and operators. Sadly, fire outbreaks have been a regular occurrence at various sections of the market. The Lagos State Government had consistently made promises to relocate the market to a more suitable place. The new location, Timberville in Agbowai Korodu, is not yet ready. For this eyewitness video of a recent visit by officials of the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development shows that the road leading to the site is under construction. The Lagos State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Binga Motosha, speaks more on this. Every year we have had to cope with that. And I, I, the government feels in its wisdom that there is no point allowing Okubaba to stand the way it is. I mean, it's a nice saw. You look at it all the way from Thor Milan Bridge and see how dirty the environment is and see that the kind of business that they are doing there is not the kind of business that should be doing so close to uh, the Thormiland Bridge, a very critical uh, uh, facility like that. And the government said, okay, we are going to move you. Every year the government has been trying to move them, they will not agree. But finally they have agreed to be moved, and they said first quarter of this year they will move. But like you have observed, it's a yearly ritual of uh, tragedy and then that yearly ritual of that tragedy has occurred again this year it's unfortunate and i hope that this is going to be the last time and that the people will agree to be moved we are being moved to in uh, k2 engineering everything is set there accommodation where they be doing their business the only thing that is left is the road 
and the road is being worked on. As I speak with you now, contractors are there, they are building the road, they are fixing it so that everything there will be very nice for them, beautiful estate, beautiful uh, environment for them to do their work, conducive environment for them to run their machines and all that, and nice accommodation for them to stay. We have, uh, since the coming of uh, Mr. Baide Sonwolu, the governor, we have uh, employed uh, persuasion to let them see the merit of their movement to Keto Ejiri. And families, leaders of uh, the businesses there, they have agreed to move. It's only a matter of time for the planned relocation to happen. The Lagos State Government says it is leaving no stone unturned in ensuring seamless operations of the sawmillers in their new location. Eyewitness Report gives you the opportunity to be a change agent in your community with your pictures and videos. Simply take images of activities around you and upload to the Channels TV Eyewitness platform, which is available on the Channels TV app from the various app stores online. Launch the app, check for Eyewitness on the menu, tap and follow the instructions on how to upload your story. Let's see what you've uploaded for the week. A video showing traders trying to secure their wares from smoldering fire at the popular Ogbejo fish market in Wari South local government area of Delta State comes first on the segment of the program. According to an eyewitness, the fire which started at about 2 p.m. on Sunday, January 23rd, was triggered by a woman who sought to burn dry refuse within the market premises the fire became unbearable as it spreads into shops. The flame was, however, contained by fighters from the state fire service as soon as they arrived. The next images represent angry youth on the street of Gashua, the headquarters of Bade Local Government Council in Yobe State. They take to the street in protest over the alleged shooting of a youth by a security operative in Garuna Kali. The governor of Yobe State, May Malambuni, has appealed to the aggrieved youth for calm and directed immediate investigation into the matter. The next set of pictures captures three vehicles involved in multiple car accidents along Damaturi Buni Yadu Road in Yobe State. The eyewitness report by the Toyota Hilux was conveying local vigilante to Buni Yadi. While the bus and a Hyundai Civic had passengers heading to Damaturi, the state capital, at least 10 people were killed and 17 others injured in the road crash, believed to have resulted from overspeeding by one of the vehicles. These are pictures showing the remains of a church building allegedly raised by Boko Haram members in Pemi, a village near Chibok, local government area of Burn State. A vigilante was reportedly killed and 15 girls abducted during the attack. The eyewitness reporter says these attacks are common in Chibok and its environs, which security sources attribute to its proximity to the Sambisa forest. The witness adds that similar attacks are frequent during dry seasons as the terrain becomes more terrible for the insurgents. Finally, in Lagos is this video showing the condition of the Central Bank of Nigeria building in Marina, sent in by an eyewitness who describes it as a national disgrace and an eyesore. He says while the front of the building is well maintained and guarded, the back of the building is more or less a dump site and toilets. He calls on the management of the bank to do the needful and save its face. Thank you for those images. We do appreciate your efforts. That's where we draw the curtains on this edition of the program. See you again next week. I am Yomi Otaibi.